All right, welcome. My name is Kirill and I'm thrilled to be here. Today we're going to be talking about Mapsly. Mapsly and Creatia is a great partnership and allows us to visualize otherwise difficult to imagine data. Creatia has a, lo a lot of information about contacts and accounts, your opportunity, your leads, etc. And some of those objects contain information about addresses. Mapsly is here to help us out. Now, Creatia has built-in maps, however, Mapsly takes it on a slightly different level. Let's discuss our agenda for today. First, we're going to introduce ourselves to Mapsly. Mapsly is a, as they, as they say, is a location intelligence and automation for any CRM, and Creatia is one of the leading ones. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to install Mapsly. Then, after we have successfully installed it, we will configure Creatia and configure Mapsly to work together. The next thing is probably the most difficult one, and yet we're going to achieve everything with the help of low-code tools. We're going to do no coding, and we will add some fields and columns to our cases uh, object and provide for integration. Let's get going. Let me switch my screen. And what I have here is an instance of Creatio. This is my local testing environment where, I try, where I'd like to test all new applications. I have already installed Mapsly on my screen. However, I will go through the installation process with you. Now, when you want to install an application, the easiest way to do that is by going to a marketplace. If you click on the system designer, and in the system designer, you can uh, search for installed applications. Now this instance might be a little bit slow because it's running on my laptop, but nonetheless, let's look for in installed applications. If you want to install a new application, just simply go click add, install from file or install from marketplace. If you're installing in the cloud, then you will be able to easily install it in, from the marketplace. You can find Mapsly on the marketplace by simply searching for Mapsly. Mapsly will be the first option. Now to install the application is fairly straightforward. Just follow the standard application guide, click the install button, choose the instance you wish to install on, and click the install. Once the install installation is complete, what you will need to do is to follow the uh, configuration guide. Configuration guide can be found right here on this tab. If you scroll down, you will be able to see the version that it supported the type of database and the environment that it can run in. But most importantly, you will see this download file. This file is the manual provided by Mapsly how to configure Creatia to integrate with that. First thing you will need to do is to create an account. I'm not going to follow through. I'm not going to go through creating an account as it's a pretty trivial task. Just put your username, your password, answer a couple of important questions. Be honest with the answers you provide and you will be granted access to Mapsly. Next thing you will need to do is you will need to provide access to Creatio. Mapsly is a connector and Mapsly is a separate application uh, all on its own. The data that they process and all the capabilities that they give to Creatio are located outside of Creatio. So they need to log into your instance of Creatio to be able to query the information they need. For example, if they want to show all the if they want to build a heat map of your contacts so you can see how many contacts you have per state or per continent, perhaps, then obviously we or Mapsly needs to download this address information from Creatio to their service, process it somehow, and show you the page. This is the reason that you're giving them the username and password. Now, once you have created the, uh, once you've completed this step, the next step is to provide uh, some key that Creatio can communicate with Mapsly. This is a two-way street and we need to configure both sides of the equation. Now there's some technical information what to do when you're on one version of Creatia versus the older one. And most of the time when you're installing in the cloud, you don't need to worry about any of this stuff. 
everything is taken care of, uh, taken care of for you. But if you're running something locally or if you're running some old instance of Creatia, you may need to go and tweak some configuration options. So after having done that, let's go back into our main application. I'm going to switch my browser to Mapsly, and I'd like to show you where we configure this um, configuration token. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to system settings. Inside system settings, we need to search for Mapsly adapter API key. A Mapsly adapter API key is that password that we need to consume, that creation needs to consume to communicate with their servers. Now this password is stored in the encrypted string, so I can't really see what it is. And the only way for me to access this encrypted string is by going to Mapsly servers and asking for a new one. So it's a fairly secure approach. Once you input this string, you will be able to configure it. Uh, Mapsly will be able to communicate with creation. Creation will be able to respond back to Mapsly. The information that Creatio sends back to Mapsly is limited and only uh, is just simply limited. It, it simply updates uh, certain events uh, when certain things get done, uh, deleted, uh, but that's about it. Let's go now to Mapsly main application in the main interface. Now you will find uh, the app in the sales but we will do, uh, we will move it to service in just a bit. When you load Mapsly, it will try to connect with the API we've provided to figure out what are your map preferences. Now mind you, Mapsly is not just for creation, it can service some other applications as well. So what you will see here is you may see here data from not just creation, but from some other endpoints, whatever they are. Now, in my case, we can see that I have configured account, contact, city, and cases. This is what we're after. Let's mute all the information I don't care about and only show the information that I do care about. In this case, I have few, or, or I have two cases logged in in the system, SR3 and SR86. If I click on the range, which is representative of a case itself, I will be able to see what's the case itself, or I can, I will be able to see the subject, who the contact is and some symptoms or basically description of my case. I can easily see that the client has internet outage after heavy rain and an SR three similar story. The items or the fields that we show on the map here are totally configurable and are not limited to just three. You can show as many or as few fields as you wish. You can show case statuses, uh, problem, uh, date time, resolution time, and whatever other information you want. But the bottom line is, why do I care to show that? Well, the reason we want to show that is because let's assume that you're a technician or let's assume that you actually have a a group of technicians who work for the company. Well, you have some tickets or you have some cases assigned, hopefully dynamically through some sort of a rule application. And in the morning when the technician logs in, he or she sees that, well, there are 10 tickets that they need to attend to. Maybe 10, maybe two, depending on the complexity, of course. So I'm not sure about many different cities, but the one that I'm from, from Toronto, um, getting from left-hand side of the city to the right one may take you about an hour and a half. So if you want to plan your day, you need to account for it. For example, I have this ticket and this ticket. Now, me personally, I know that this is going to be about 35 minute, maybe 40 minute commute time. Now my depot is located right downtown or the company depot located about here. And this commute is going to take probably about 20 minutes. So if I want to offer my clients a good quality of service, I probably need to give them a window that I am going to show up. Mapsly is great at that because Mapsly can help us figure out the time it's going to take us from point A to point B, put it on the map and help the technician decide which ticket they're going to service first. On the right hand side, you will be able to see the routes. Now by default, my 
instance of Napsley is configured in such a way that I have this location, one Young Street, as my default location or my depot. That means that every trip I start will start from there and end there. Now, obviously, your configuration might be different, but in my case, this works. So first thing when I come in the morning and after having gotten my coffee, I'm going to get into my truck and I'm going to drive to ticket number three and then to case number 86. Now let's see how Mapsley can help me out with this. Well, if I just simply click on the ticket, I will be able to add it to my route. Or in my case, I can remove it from my route. And the only case that I need to service is case number 86. Let's remove this one from the route too. If I now zoom out, I will be able to see all my cases on, on my map. Now, Mapsly offers us option of different layers and limiting our map to only certain uh, certain neighborhoods or certain areas of service. But if I wanted to add a case to service, all I have to do is hover over it or click on it and say, add to my route. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and let's say I'm going to add another case. I'm going to take this one, eight, number 86. I'm going to add it to my route. Now I can specify the date and time that I would like to depart or arrive by, and then I can just simply click on build route. My route will be built considering my starting point where my depot is located. In this case, this is my head office where all the trucks are parked overnight. So I can see that from this address to this address to this address, I have three points to visit, and then obviously I have to go back. I can start my trip and I will be able to check in and submit the time that I actually check in. So the case information will be updated for those start times and end times. And this is very valuable, especially when we're trying to do time in attendance, but remote. Now, by default, when we're looking at Mapsly, Mapsly doesn't come with um, cases information provided. Mapsly can synchronize contacts and accounts, leads and opportunities but not cases. So we need to do something internally to be able to configure it. One of the corner or one of the pillars of Mapsly is obviously to be able to parse the address and convert it to uh, coordinates on the map so they can build it. Now, if we look at our case, or if you look at my case, the way I've configured it, and give me a second, let me load the page. Uh, I have simply added address information. So here are my SR86 and SR number three. Let's take a look at SR86. I've added this tab by simply going to a section wizard and adding a couple of fields to my cases object. In this address, I've provided a string for my address, the city from a lookup of cities, the region from a lookup of states and provinces, and the country lookup from a data source of countries. I now have all information required for Mapsly to map it. The next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to actually use the information from, let's say, contact that is here. Let me give you an example. Let's create a new case. Let's choose um, a contact here. And in my case, I'm going to choose Dorothy. And Dorothy already has an address. And the reason she has an address is because I went ahead and I added an address for her. So let's now go ahead and choose some SLAs and some other components that are required for service to be created. Now, I don't have really any SLAs for, you know, uh, for anonymous users right now, but what I can do is I can say it's an incident. Now, we are not going to worry about configuration item or assignee group or assignee period, but what we do care about is the subject. Now, the subject usually represents a quick line describing what the problem is. Leaky, uh, uh, leaky, jeez, uh, can't spell, sorry. Uh, leaking uh, basement, let's say. After having installed concrete foundation, we find that the basement is leaking. Leaking, ba uh, leaking, basement uh, next to the front front entrance. 
Okay, so let's assume that this is the case that we file. Now, this case can be obviously filed through various means. It could be a landing page, it could be a telephone call, it could be an email or SMS message, whatever it is. As long as we know who the person is and what the, what the case information is, we will be able to map it. Let's save this case. Now the case is going to be assigned a new number. In my case, it's going to be number 87. And if I go back to number 87 in my address, I will see that somehow this address just simply showed up. There's no magic here. What ended up happening is I've configured a small business process that copies the address from the selected user or selected contact to just this case's address. Let's quickly review this business process. We're going to go to a process library. All right. Let's review this business process. There are two starting elements. Something happens after change and something happens on after item is inserted. In both of these instances, I'm just simply capturing the ID of the record that is being modified. And here you can see that I'm looking for, or I'm storing the ID of the case and I'm setting the value of a unique identifier of the event after inserted. I do the same thing here. After the record has been modified, the record being case, I'm storing the ID of the case under change into a case variable. Now a case variable is easy to see. It's right here, parameter of a type lookup. I then go and map it to this element just so they have some additional login to go by just in case something goes bad. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the case. Perfect. So after having read this contact, what I can do is I can finally update my case. In my case, just simply takes the address that I read from the contact, the country, the zip, the state, and essentially all the address information. Let's close all the unnecessary tabs. And what I want to do now is I want to demonstrate how this might be useful. So we have recently added leaking basement, and excuse my spelling, uh, Let's go to studio. Uh, let's go to sales. And in sales, we can go to Mapsly. <clears throat> Good. Now, when we have all of our cases selected, if our case is not automatically picked up on the map, that just simply means that the time period for the case to synchronize has not yet lapsed. Now, by default, cases will be synchronized, I believe, once every 30 minutes or once every 15 minutes, and you can configure this thing. However, let's take a look how, actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's click on the synchronize button while it's synchronizing, and I'm going to synchronize, I don't care for the account or the city, um, no city, let it be there, but I'm going to synchronize all the other cases. And let's take a look at some options that we have when we are configuring Mapsly. So here, when we're doing a case, first thing you can do is you can select your icon. Now, it could be at various sizes all the way, you know, to some monstrously huge one, or it can be something smaller. By default, it's 12. Now, when the case is selected, the only thing that I want to show is number and the contact, and that should be enough for me. However, when I hover or when I get a pop-up, I can select contact, subject, symptoms, and I can add some additional columns. Additional columns here are the ones that are defined on the case, and you could see that these are all case columns. So Mapsly offers us some fantastic customization options. Now I can see that my contacts are still being synchronized and it might take a while as Mapsly needs to go through quite a lot of records. Now by default, like I mentioned before, it takes about every 30 minutes, Mapsly will go and query if, the new, if there is new data and if there is new data, it's gonna have to go and parse, 
figure out if there is an address, go figure out what the coordinates are. And then eventually it's going to go and put it on the map somewhere. Now it says that the data has been refreshed. So let's see if we can find what, um, what the update was. So I've have two cases here, but there is another window here that I forgot to mention table view. In table view, you will be able to also see all your information, account, contact cities, and a bunch of other ones. So in this case, we're going to say two cases. And here I can see that I have three cases and some data has not yet been completely pulled in. There it is. It's coming and it's coming to Pickering or Princeton. I, I believe this is uh, case number. Um, this is our Dorothy. So if I look at all my cases, there we go. So Andrew Baker, that's Kirill. And at some point, I'm sure Dorothy is going to come here as well. Maybe I need to get out and get back in. Let's see if that works. There we go. So here's my Dorothy on case number 87. So after a little bit of time, uh, the case is added and the technician logs in. I mean, it, it's not expected that the technicians are going to be logging in exactly the second that the case is filed. Um, but after a little bit, several minutes, you will see that the cases are being added. And what we can see once you hover over the range is here's your leaky basement and here's the description and the, these fields are completely customizable. So Mapsly offers us a fantastic option or fantastic um, add-on to map, visually display our, um, our objects, be it a contact or an account or an opportunity, and see where they are on the map. Now, Mapsly has a lot of other features. For example, you can draw some radiuses here, some circles. Um, you can see how many uh, miles between various points of interest, especially uh, if you're in the real estate business and you're trying to promote certain property, you can measure the distance to the best uh, school districts, etc. So um, again, Mapsly is an add-on. It's very easy to configure. Uh, we can totally customize it. And if there are some features that are missing, then we can probably configure them with the help of processes, local tools that Creatia is offering, etc. Now, at this point, I'd like to, again, go to mapsly.com and point out that if you have any questions, then you can find all the instructions, documentation, pricing, and anything else that you want to see about Mapsly right here. Anyway, give them a try, and we think that this is a great add-on for your service needs. Thank you. Bye-bye.